Hello, third grade. You have been working with plain shapes and solid figures. And in this lesson, we're going to take it a step further and classify those plain and solid figures based on their attributes. Now, before we do that, make sure you have your workbook page, page 257 and a pencil. And we're going to get started. If you look at these two examples before we start, I, I need to remind you about right angles. Now a right angle is when two lines intersect perpendicularly. Okay, so if you see the left line, or it's the vertical lines coming down absolutely straight and at a perpendicular way to intersect with the bottom line. Okay, so it's almost like making a T like that. Okay, so um, that is how a right angle is created. And the way we mark that is with a square here in the corner, in the angle area. Now this one here is not a right angle because this line that is coming down is not perpendicular to the bottom line. So that is not a right angle. And we needed to review that because we're going to identify the right angles in these figures. So let's take a look at the directions. Before we even read this here, number one, we need to read the overall directions. Sometimes those get skipped, so we want to make sure we read those. Follow the directions to classify the plane figures. Draw a square in each right angle. Let's do that. Let's go through these figures and identify which ones have right angles. So you pause the video and mark all the right angles that you can see and then unpause the video and I will have them all marked. Check your answers. Did you get all of them? How about the ones in the triangles over here? There's one and there's one. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to read the directions for number one. Now that we have identified the right angles, we're ready to move on. Write a C inside each circle. Okay, well, we know this is a circle. So let's put a C in the middle of that one. What about this one? Is that a circle? It has the round shape, but is it completely and perfectly round? No, that is an oval. So that is not a circle. We're not going to mark that one. But this one is a circle. All right, let's look at the next one. Write a Q inside each quadrilateral. What is a quadrilateral? Do you remember what quad means? How many of you ride a quad at home? Some of you do. Well, quad means four. And lateral means sides. So we're going to mark a Q inside each shape that has four sides. Okay, so pause the video and mark a Q inside each quadrilateral and then unpause and I'll have the answers up for you. Here are the answers. Are all the quadrilaterals the same shape? No. Do they all have right angles? No. 
but they do all have four sides. So let's do the next one. Write an S inside each square. Well, what do we know about squares? All four sides need to be equal in length. And that makes it different from a rectangle. Even though a square is a rectangle, a rectangle, most rectangles are not squares. So you need to make sure that for it to be a square, each side has to measure the exact same length. Pause the video and put an S inside each square. All right, there are two squares. Let's move on. Write a T inside each triangle. Pause the video and put a T inside each triangle. Did you mark three triangles? How many sides does each triangle have? Very good, a triangle has three sides. So now that we have practiced with the flat plane figures, let's work on some solid figures. Okay, this time we're going to write the name of the solid figure that matches the description. So let's look at number two. It says one face and one vertex. Remember, the face is the flat side. It can lay on its face or sit on its face. And it won't roll when it's sitting on a flat face. Okay. A vertex is where two edges come together. So let's look at number two. One face and one vertex. Which of those shapes, these ones up here, has one face and one vertex? We have a cone, a cube, a cylinder, rectangular prism, and a sphere. Which one do you think? It is a cone. So write cone on the line. If you want to pause and work ahead, you may. And then when you're done with number six, unpause. Because I'm going to read these a little faster because this is, this is like a review, this bottom part. Number three, six square faces. Which of those figures has six square faces? Now remember the key word is square faces. What do you think? If you said the cube, you are correct. It is the cube. Number four, which of those figures has two faces and one curved surface? Look for the two flat faces and one curved surface. Well, if we look at the cone, it has one flat face and a curved surface. So what other shape could it be? You're right, a cylinder. So let's write that down in its spot. Number five. No faces, absolutely zero faces, and one curved surface. You're right, the sphere. Very good. And the last one, I know you can just write down what's left, but it's always good to double check. Six rectangular faces. Hmm. And because the rectangular prism is left, let's look at it. 
Yes, those are rectangular faces. So let's write rectangular prism. All right, very good. All right, so let's look at the back. Now this back part is your independent part. You're, you have uh, a little review on the back with the uh, flat plane shapes. You're going to um, write down the names of those figures and then you're going to answer those questions. I'll do number one with you just to get you started. All right, because that is a flat figure, what is the name of that figure? Remember, flat, not 3D. So it wouldn't be a sphere. It would be a very good circle. Then for number six, you have to uh, write the name of each solid figure and answer the questions. What is the name of that first figure? You're right. It is a cube. So you will write cube. Then they're going to ask you some questions like which figures have a curved surface, which figures have at least one vertex, and then you have division practice at the bottom. And if you notice, they are all being divided by nine. So um, if you struggle with that, you can always count by nines. Remember that we went nine, then 18 and so forth. And you made the number line and then you could use that to help you if you get stuck. Try not to rely on that, but use it in case you get stuck. All right, so your job is to finish this page 258 and then to do your homework page the front 255 and then turn those in. All right, until next time.